Because, I mean, when you kind of even think about it and look at artists like Juice World, it's like, I think he's at this point, they've released like three or four projects after like he's been dead. Mm -hmm. And I know like there's been the stories of how he's like, he used to record so much music. So I know like he's probably like, had so much music to, like go from. But at one point, do you be like, let's say on the seventh, eighth, ninth project of like releasing his music, when do you kind of think about it? Like, is this still like his drafts? Still him? <laughs> like, where do you think the industry is going like more so with AI. AI is gonna have some massive impact on the music industry for real, for real over the next year, or do you think it's a little further along? Um, Personally, what I think with AI, um, and this is gonna be kind of a problem more so for the fans than labels, uh, I think that like, you know how like we have like a lot of posthumous releases like when artists die, I think instead of only relying on like the songs that they made before they died and even like just like the roughs and all of that type of stuff i think they're going to take it a step further of making records with the ai voice and the fans wouldn't know and they would just be allowed to make not i don't know i wouldn't say loud but they would just put out more projects and make more money off that artist and probably try to renegotiate deals with that artist's estate to put out more projects with ai voice oh, but shit. making it to where it's like you really think it's this artist like it really sounds like the music that they make because the voice is already there. It just got to like sound like how they sound. I mean, like as far as like the lyrics and stuff and the melodies and stuff. And I think that's what labels are going to do because it's going to make them more money. But it'll be bad for fans. Bro, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I hadn't heard that perspective yet. <laughs> like, obviously, we know that there's a lot of situations. These records are going to be created for mm -hmm. sure that fans don't know. Yeah. Right. If it's somebody because it could just be a random kid in the room. I make this record that sounds like Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. And then people don't know they're actually not Kendrick Lamar. Right. Yeah. But if you have a situation where everybody is in on it, all the official people, the record label, the yeah. estate, then truly, yeah, I might. I, the, the lie will never be, uh, you know, revealed. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And, you know, knowing how these labels move, <laughs> I do not. I do not doubt that one bit. And knowing how, you know, you know, some estates might be like, hey, well, we might as well. Cause we, yeah. we own the likeness, right? We we own the like whatever else is required, right? Yeah. To be able to do that. And it's it would technically be legal. Exactly. It's just the fans who just would be mad know. about it. But and they wouldn't even be mad about it because they wouldn't really know. But right. It just comes down That's to do crazy. and does anybody care enough? Like, or they what do you like kind of value more? And I think just generally speaking with businesses, it's a business, so if it makes money and you can get away with it, cool. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you wanna see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you wanna check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the WWW or it won't work because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. If you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. It technically is just bringing life back to the IP because we we do that with movies and you know other type of images, cartoons, and things like that. Yeah. Technically, it would just be that, right? Because all those things are art forms. I think we associate music a little bit like yeah. more personally, but re technically, it's just that, yeah. and it's just an uneasy thing that we're probably gonna have to get over. Because I mean, when you kind of even think about it and look at artists like Juice World, it's like I think he's at this point. They've released like three or four projects after like he's been dead. Mm -hmm. And I know like there's been the stories of how he's like, he used to record so much music. So I know like he's probably like, had so much music to, like go from. But at one point, do you be like, at, like, you know, at, like let's say on the seventh, eighth, ninth project of like releasing his music, when do you kind of think about it? Like, mm, yeah, is, is this still like his drafts? <laughs> yeah, see, that's that whole thing. That's when you get into conspiracies. Like, oh yeah, they're going to 
they starting to build that he works all the time there. <laughs> Step number one, <laughs> so it could be believable. They trying to create it, make it seem, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, man, that's a great take. That's a great take, and and that would be interesting, very interesting to uh to see.